potential Democratic rivals are voicing their opposition. For example, former Rhode Island Governor Lincoln Chafee, who is also considering a White House run, he told Politico, quote, I would argue that anybody who voted for the Iraq war should not be president, and certainly anybody who voted for the Iraq war should not lead the Democratic Party into an election. He's not mincing words. And the former Democratic governor, he's not alone in feeling that way. Listen to what liberal senator Elizabeth Warren said about Hillary just yesterday. Hillary Clinton could announce uh, any day now that she is going to seek the presidential nomination for and presidency in 2016. Do you think she's the future of the Democratic Party? Well, I think we have to see, uh, first of all, if she declares and what she says she wants to run on. I think there needs to be a vigorous debate in the whole question about running for president. I think everyone who's running for president should be talking about what they plan to do to strengthen and rebuild America's middle class. Wow, Hillary Clinton clearly does not have her vote yet. And now we have some advice for Hillary. If she wants to win the presidency, which we all know she does, well, she owes you, the American people, an explanation about the following things. Why did the Clinton Foundation accept foreign donations from countries like Saudi Arabia that have deplorable rights for women and others? What is Bill Clinton's relationship to convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein? Did he ever travel to what would they call Orgy Island? Does Hillary have a nasty temper, as many people have alleged? Will Hillary come clean about her private email server and stop making excuses? And will she admit that she lied when she blamed the Benghazi terror attack on a YouTube video and claimed it was a spontaneous demonstration? And can she list her accomplishments? What are they? Now, somehow, we doubt that we'll ever get answers to those things. And as we head on back over to our desk, we have now joining us with reaction from the Washington Examiner. Rebecca Berg is with us. And also Fox News contributor, Democratic strategist Doug Schoen, and the author of Blood Feud, Ed Klein, is with us. Guys, it's good to see you good all. Good to see you. Good to Ed, see let you. Me start with you. Here's what's going to be interesting. She's going to try and distance herself from Barack Obama. Right. The Obamas and the Clintons, as you have chronicled, they hate each other. Is she going to be able to successfully do that without retribution from Obama? Not at all. I mean, we know now that Valerie Jarrett has instituted a whole series of investigations of Hillary when she was Secretary of State. A couple of those, the emails and the uh, use of foreign governments for the Clinton Foundation, have already dropped. More is yet to come from the Obamas. Yeah. All right, let's go through Doug. She's sure. got a lot of problems. Those questions sure. I asked there. How big a problem is Saudi Arabia and all these countries with atrocious records on gay rights, women's rights, religious freedom? How big an issue is that? Well, I think that is an issue, but candidly, you have repeatedly talked about Orgy Island. It was a good week for her. The matters against Alan Dershowitz and Prince Andrew were dropped, raising questions. But the case goes on. The case goes on, but the credibility of the woman is well, raised into woman, question. But the, but the case goes on, but you have all these other women that, and, and ultimately, you may even have Bill Clinton having to testify but under oath. All these here. other women haven't said anything about Bill Clinton yet, Sean, so, so she gotta... doesn't really have a problem okay. there. As but far you have as I Saudi Arabia, say. great hypocrisy. Right, that is a problem. Okay, Nick, you're, you're a liberal Democrat. She's been in public office all these right. years. Name her top three specific accomplishments. I think that is the large question combined with what Elizabeth Warren said, which is what is her program for the future? She had problem with message, as you know, in 08. She had problems uh, articulating in her book to her what her philosophy and programs were. She'll have to prove that she does now. All right, Rebecca, let me go to you and let's play some of the worst moments of Hillary and ask you how big a factor you think they'll be in a campaign. The great story here for anybody willing to find it and write about it and explain it is this vast right-wing conspiracy that has been conspiring against my husband since the day he announced for president. I don't feel no ways tired. I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I remember landing under sniper fire there was supposed to be some kind of a greeting ceremony at the airport, but instead we just ran with our heads down to get into the vehicles uh, to get to our base. The fact is we had four dead Americans. Was it I because understand. of a protest or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? We came out of the White House not only dead broke but in debt. Uh, we had no money when we got there and we struggled to 
you know, piece together the resources for mortgages, for houses, for Chelsea's education. You know, it was not easy. Well, let's go into this, Rebecca, a little bit. The predominantly black audience, she goes into this bizarre accent of hers. Then you have, oh, we landed under sniper fire. It was, an, it was a lie as big as Brian Williams, for crying out loud. It was made up out of whole cloth because we had the video. There was no sniper fire. She was greeted by a young girl handing her flowers. What difference does it make at this point with Benghazi? How big a factor are those issues? I mean, that was quite a highlight reel, Sean, and I think you'll see Republicans using those clips over and over during this campaign, because here is an example of all of the baggage that Hillary Clinton has to deal with, uh, her past with the Bill Clinton presidency, which is obviously riddled with problems for her. Uh, some of these stories that she has told that have not been accurate or maybe that are being challenged now, uh, potential scandals with Benghazi. And the House committee, of course, is still looking into this, and she might have to sit for an interview with Trey Gowdy in that committee. So you have uh, all of this potential right. uh, material for Republicans to use. So much has been made. I'll ask both of you this about sure. Hillary's temper. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Gail Sheehy's book. And she described her temper in the book Hillary's Choices as, quote, she is angry, not all of the time, but most of the time. Then we go to former Clinton spokesperson Dee Dee Myers, and she said, Mrs. Clinton got really angry. She attacked George, meaning George Stephanopoulos, and anybody that stood up and tried to say that that was a bad idea, you know, was smashed down, belittled very personally. And I mean, you know, where I said that the president didn't really attack people personally, Mrs. Clinton sometimes did. And not only would she sort of humiliate you in front of your colleagues or whoever happened to be around, Hillary tended to be the kind of campaign, would kind of run a campaign against the people behind their back. And that was certainly my experience. And one more, George Stephanopoulos himself. She just jumped down my throat and basically said, you never believed in us. You never stood for us. We were all alone in New Hampshire, and it was fierce and chilling. And I was kind of stunned. It was the most hurtful thing I thought that she could say, especially in front of all of my colleagues at the time. So much has been made this week about Rand Paul and Perkley in, in interviews with Savannah Guthrie. Right. This sounds like an angry woman. It is an angry woman. And recently, when she heard about the Jeffrey Epstein matter and the Orgy Island, she went barreling into Bill Clinton's office in Chappaqua, took her hand, and cleaned off his desk wiping off everything, including his Chihuly sculptures, mm. furious at him and practically killed him. I mean, she has well, this terrible anger. You know her. I do know her. Right. Isn't one of her, she's, doesn't ha, she's a mediocre politician, let's be honest. She doesn't have the skills, the political skills that Bill Clinton has. Sure. What about this temper? How bad is well, it? I'll put it in personal terms, Sean. Okay. I was invited to play a significant role in the 2008 presidential election. I chose to pass on that, and I've never had any regrets. She is a talented woman. She's a smart woman, but she is not somebody I would want to associate my political career with, even though I will vote for her, and I hope be able to vote enthusiastically. I'll try and, I'll try and convince you otherwise. <laughs> I know you will. Rebecca, how big a, a, an issue is it if that temper issue really... Uh, this is only five, three examples. I have dozens more of people saying the same thing on the record. How big an issue? The temper is an issue, especially because she has a long history of distrust of the press. She is suspicious of the press and her motives, and that makes it hard for her to sit for an interview and seem happy and relatable. But it's also a larger problem of can she seem relatable when she's interacting with voters? And this is why she's, she's not, not a great campaigner. It's very forced for her. It's very stiff. Yeah. All right, guys, good to see you all. Good to see you. see you. Too. Thank you. All right, coming up later tonight in a Hannity exclusive, you're going to meet the author who claims that Hillary Clinton physically beat her husband, Bill Bloody, when he was in the White House. That story's coming out, uh, coming up next. Also tonight, civil rights leaders have expressed their disappointment with President Barack Obama. So, should they support Hillary Clinton running for president? And coming up next, Tavis Smiley joins us to answer that very question. Then later tonight, Frank Luntz explains how Hillary Clinton's rhetoric is not resonating well with voters when it comes to her numerous scandals. That and much more on this busy news night.